This is Cedric Hardwick. Welcome to Adventure in Freedom. We have an unusual film for you today. It is produced by the Norwegian government and represents an adventure in freedom made possible by the combined efforts of the Joint Distribution Committee, an agency of the United Jewish Appeal, and the country of Norway. But first I should like to ask you to remember back to 1946 and what we then called the DP problem, the Displaced Persons problem. Surely you haven't forgotten about Bergenfeld. This was a place where Hitler demonstrated the full meaning of Nazi Kultur. You remember. Here the mighty German science proved beyond dispute that the human body properly utilized makes a passable bar of soap. Or better still, an ounce or so of ashes suited perfectly for fertilizing vegetable plots. And yet in this blood-drenched land, in this very Germany, by whose orders six million innocent people were put to death solely because they were Jews. Here in the same towns and communities where just a few years ago the stormtrooper trucks rolled and the swastika waved supreme, a miracle came to pass. With clock-like regularity, each time the train came to bear a thousand emigrants or more from the dark of the past, to a brighter future. Measure the wonder of the miracle by what you see now. This is Munich, the very city to which in November 1918, Corporal A. Hitler, late of the Kaiser's armies, came home from the wars with hate in his heart and murder on his mind to build the Nazi party and to proclaim to the world death to decency, death to democracy, and death to all men who hold with free ideals. And from this Munich, from this mere tomb, see life step forth, vigorous and renewed, as the revived remnant of a heroic people begins a journey to a state called Israel, to a place called home. How did the miracle happen? You have a right to ask the question. How did it come about that here, where Hitler decreed the end, the new beginning should also be made? The answer is important. In the triumphs of the good cause, free men find strength. But let the answer wait a little while longer. There are other great events which need to be reported. That was how it was at the end of World War II when 250,000 Jewish displaced persons emerged from the Nazi concentration camps or from wartime hiding and poured into the American zones of occupation. By 1952, most of these DPs had gone to Israel, to this country and to other democracies, but not all. Many were very ill, so handicapped they did not believe that they could start a new life in a new land. But the film you will now see, produced by the government of Norway, will show you how some of these hardcore DPs have been given new lives, new homes, and new hope, instead of no place on earth. In this small Bavarian village in South Germany, people have resumed their normal lives. Shops are well stocked. The daily life of the village is undisturbed. Villagers can enjoy the quiet beauty of their surroundings. They can sit under the linden trees and drink the good Bavarian beer from enormous glasses. Life is not much different than before the war, or for that matter, before Hitler. A mile away is another community. This is rather different. Here live the people who survived the concentration camps. Here are the people who have nothing to do because they are not wanted. These are the hardcore DPs, the DPs who are maimed or ill. Those who, after years of suffering and brutality, were left with scars on their lungs or their minds or their bodies. 
those who were just be a charge on the community, the ones who were too old to work. Some are young and well, but have a history of tuberculosis. Of course, they are no longer behind barbed wire. They're free to come and go as they please. But how free are you when there's nowhere to go? You need a job. There are no jobs for these people in Germany. There are no jobs. There is only the camp. This young couple have survived concentration camps and cannot leave here because they have had tuberculosis. One needs courage to accept this fate. Many feel that there can be no future for them. They think of the time that has passed since they knew a good life. They've spent years in Nazi concentration camps and eight years in DP camps since the war. And now they watch their dreams slowly die. When they were in the concentration camps, would they have had the will to survive if they had known what they had to look forward to? For these people, the years since the war have been a long, slow round of different camps, of one disappointment after another. Since the war, some have applied for entry into half a dozen different countries, but have been turned down because of age or ill health. They are remnants of people one or two survivors of a whole family. They're always waiting, always telling their story, seeing commissions from one country after another, hoping that this time it might be their chance. And this time it will be a chance for some. This Norwegian commission is taking active tuberculosis cases, even whole families. Some of its members were in concentration camps themselves. It is choosing people whom it feels will benefit most. In this pile of papers are the histories of the applicants, each one a story of suffering and frustration. In the evening, the commission gets together to decide who can best be helped. For Norway is a small country and can't possibly take them all. While they deliberate, the people must wait. While they wait, they read a letter from one who has already gone to Norway. It tells of how this woman came to this small Norwegian town with her husband and two children and that she was the only one who was healthy. The other three had tuberculosis. To have her husband and children all suffering from tuberculosis and to be alone in a strange country was not easy for her. the children, it was better. The nurses used to bring them to us so that for a little while we could be one family again. For a long time I had to keep my faith. I had to remember that others had faith in us. Three out of four of us with tuberculosis and yet they brought us to Norway and looked after us. There are others of us in the same town. One DP family has a small boy who is a real Norwegian schoolboy already. 
I like to think that soon my children can have a normal life like this, too. For some, it is not so easy. The blind man, Kubatsky, lives in this town. He was quite unable to work when he arrived after the war. There seemed no place for him until he found his work with others who needed help. Working with these children who have had poliomyelitis, he has found an occupation which is satisfying and worthwhile. He, he can feel useful and important and wanted. This is a new life for him after the camps in Germany where life had no meaning. As he senses these children's limbs gaining new life, so he begins to sense his own recovery. Not of his sight, but of his faith in himself. The children understand this, for there is a bond between them and their handicaps. So behind Kubatsky's blind eyes, a new world is forming. A world in which there is hope and confidence. And I have hope, too. For today, I start a new life. What I've told you is in the past now. Today, my family are leaving the hospital, and I'm waiting to meet them, and we will all be together again. Norway's faith that given a chance this family could be rehabilitated was well justified. Two years ago, things seemed pretty hopeless for them. The father and two children had tuberculosis. They had no country, no work. They were typical of many DPs classed as hardcore, as unacceptable. The people no country would take. Except for the Joint Distribution Committee and its program of rehabilitation for the hardcore cases, they would have wasted their lives away in idleness and frustration. They would have had no future and no hope of a future. They would have been condemned to the hopelessness of the DP camps. Condemned as many still are to waiting for something to happen. Condemned to the endless talk, to useless wasted lives. These are the people who are left behind. They look pretty much like the people you and I know. There doesn't seem much reason why this should be the best that life can offer them. Unless they get a chance, this is how they will spend their lives and this is how their children will grow up. Why? Because ten years ago or more, they were herded into cattle trucks and taken to concentration camps. Now are they to receive the ultimate insult of being told that they are useless, that they're not wanted, or are they to be given the chance of a new life? This is Cedric Hardwick again. You have just seen No Place on Earth, an adventure in freedom made possible by the cooperation of the Joint Distribution Committee, an agency of the United Jewish Appeal, and the Norwegian government. In short, you have seen how your support of the United Jewish Appeal has helped resettle victims of Nazism in one hospitable country. But your help is still needed overseas, for there are many hardcore DPs who hope for the future who still search for a place on earth and can only reach that place, whether it be Norway, Israel, or other lands, through your continued support of the United Jewish Appeal through your local campaign. Goodbye, and be with us again when we bring you another adventure in freedom.